production for Panther Sports Talk is brought to you in part by the following supporters of WEIU. Welcome to another edition of Panther Sports Talk right here on WIU. I'm your host, Rich Moser. We're joined every week by EIU head football coach Kim Dameron. And coach, I guess we'll talk about last week's game and then we'll, we'll, we'll go forward to this week's game. And I guess, I don't want to say missed opportunity, but I know it's a game that you guys probably looked back over the film and over the course of evaluating it on Sunday and a little bit yesterday, probably saw one or two things here that, hey, if that ball bounces our way or, or this or that, then we're walking all away with a, a win over a nationally ranked team. No question about it. Um, you know, you, you, uh, you go back over, you know, every call, every decision, every everything, but we, when it gets right down to it, uh, you know, it's two pretty good football teams. And, um, the, you know, we, we uh, got off to a good start and uh, felt good at halftime. Felt like we were controlling the, the, both sides of the line of scrimmage and, and doing a good job. And, Came out actually in the second half and started off uh, fairly well. And then, um, you know, we just had a couple of critical mistakes that, that hurt us. And, uh, you know, we, uh, we've got the ball in the red zone and we're moving again. They really hadn't stopped us much all day long. And, and um, uh, you know, we put the ball on the ground. And, uh, which, and then they, in turn, drive 72 yards that, that drive and, and score and, and get it to within a one-score game. And... Um, you know, and then we compound that, you know, by, um, you know, another muffed punt and, uh, and then a blocked field goal. And so, uh, you know, you know, whether you can, whether you say we didn't make the plays or they did, uh, you know, how you look at it uh, down the stretch, uh, we did things that ended up um, putting us in a situation where we had to come back. And I was proud of the way the team responded. I was proud of the way our offense went out and, and moved the ball down the field and put it in the end zone. And, and, uh, and then we kicked the extra point to, to ensure overtime and, um, and make sure that, um, you know, we gave our kids a chance to win. Um, and so uh, wouldn't have done it any other way. Hadn't, hadn't second-guessed that, that decision at all. And um, so, uh, you know, I, I just uh, I feel bad that um, – you know, we had a couple of turnovers. I know, you know, nothing uh, is is worse, you know, like for, for uh, you know, Shepard Little that, that ended up, you know, he muffed the punt and and, um, and fumbled in overtime, but had really competed very well for the game and, and had played very hard, run hard, was uh, was the getting close to the Shep you're used to seeing in the past. And, and um, you know, because he went through about three weeks of a tough injury with a high ankle sprain. And, and uh, so... Uh, I like the way we competed. Uh, we just got to make the plays to win, a full go win the game. And against a good team, they make it tough on you. Now you talk about Shepard Little. You guys were able to have him back finally mm -hmm. to full strength. And I think you as a, as a head coach probably kind of for the first time this season saw all the offensive weapons for the most part healthy and kind of clicking together and kind mm -hmm. of showed what you can do against a really good defense. Yeah, I mean, they, they, they're one of the top defenses in the country. And we put, put up over 500 yards of offense on them and scored 33 points. So it's not like uh, we didn't do anything right during the game. We did. Uh, and defensively, to be honest with you, I thought we, we played uh, pretty darn good for about two and a half quarters. Uh, you know, and, and one, of, one of the things that we talked to the team about on, Saturday, or on Sunday, um, you know, is that uh, we've got to – Right now, we've got too many people on defense playing too many snaps. And, and so we've got to get some of our backup guys more snaps early in a game uh, to, um, to make sure that down the stretch in the fourth quarter that we can be as fresh a defense as we can be. Because I really felt like that uh, the number of plays that defenses, plays, defenses play these days uh, with the high, you know, with the off. I mean, they had 89 plays. I think we had 88. That's a lot of plays. And... Um, and so, you know, we've got to get a little bit more out of more people uh, going forward. Now, you talk about mo football, football is a momentum game. It kind of went back mm -hmm. and forth. When they took the lead, you guys did a great job. You talked about there of driving down. Greg Stevens had a great fourth down play there. To mm -hmm. Jalen threw the touchdown pass to Adam. At that point in time, when you're head coach, any thought at all of going for two and trying to win the game right there? Or was kind of – did you already know mm -hmm. after before the fourth down play that – hey, we're going to kick the extra point and, and go for overtime 
Or no, I, 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 you know, I, uh, I didn't feel like that um, there was any reason to put our kids in a one play mentality. Um, I've never done that. Never. I've been in a lot of overtime games over over my years. That uh, since the overtime was was uh, uh, instated the way it is, and and the uh, the thing that uh, you know we've always done is is if we can get it to overtime, we go to overtime because uh, you give your kids another chance to line up and go play the game as a play as opposed to maybe saying now. I, I will say this. You know, if I felt like that, we just couldn't play another play. Uh, if if uh, there's no way we would have stopped them, or if you know, I didn't feel that way. I felt like that uh, if we won the toss, we wanted to play defense first. We didn't win the toss, uh, so we played offense first. Had I known we were going to turn it over, <laughs> maybe I would have. But um, you know, obviously you don't know that. And at, at the time, that's always been what I think is the prudent thing to do: is give your, ch your kids a chance to go to go play the game again. Now, you guys come back from that game a hard loss you head forward now here against southeast missouri everything is still in front of you guys opportunity still to run the table put yourself in the in the conference championship race so i'm sure that's got to be part of the message when the post game speech happened there i know it's a tough loss but you got to keep those guys focused still moving forward in the conference pitcher absolutely uh, you know we're we're not out of this thing by any stretch we have put ourselves in a position where we have to go in and, um, you know, when you look at the first half of our season, um, you know, we, we played a pretty tough schedule, which I hope has, I, and I truly believe this, that it, it uh, had us ready to go play in Eastern Kentucky on the road and have a chance to win. Um, you know, one of the things that we had to do as a football team in the first half of the season is to learn to win a little differently than what they had probably won in the past because the dynamic's different. You know, the, uh, uh, the players are different. The, uh, uh, the conference is different. And so, um, you know, the thing that, that we are looking forward to now is the second half of this season, and let's go uh, do the things that we do well uh, with the people that do them well. And, uh, you know, let's and, – and, and we don't have any um, uh, false sense of security or anything like that that – I mean, every game could come down to the last play of the game. Every game could come down in this league to uh, the last drive, and that's why we have to prepare. Okay. The second half of the season essentially starts this weekend. You guys got six games in, got six games remaining. You play a Southeast Missouri State team <clears throat> this weekend that came off a double overtime loss in Murray State, but they had kind of been one of the surprise teams. One of the games that stands out to me is their win over Southeast Louisiana, and I say that from the fact that your offensive coordinator was there last year. Is that – when he's starting to look at film on their defense, since his, his offense may have some similarities to what mm -hmm. they run, is that a film that he probably has queued up a little bit more than maybe some of the other ones? Oh, I don't think there's any question about that because, I mean, you know, obviously he knows their kids, he knows their offense, he knows, you know, and so, yeah, I mean, he, he you know, obviously are going to look at those kinds of things, but then again, they are too. Uh, they know where Greg's from and they, you know, and so, you know, I, I, I look at it, it it's, it's uh, when you're talking about though, different football players and different dynamics and who does things, you know, differently, you know, and they're a little uh, unconventional uh, defensively uh, than what we're used to seeing uh, SEMO is. And so uh, it, it's going to be uh, something that's a, it's a good challenge. And, and the thing about it is coach Tuke's got those guys playing really hard down there. And um, you know, it's, it's basically the same players that, that they had a year ago, but, uh, but you can see uh, watching them play, they play extremely hard and, and, and the attitude of that football team is pretty good. Now, from the defensive side of the ball, is one of the players that's really kind of come to the forefront for them is their quarterback. And statistically on, on paper, and that's all I've seen him on mm -hmm. for, his numbers look very similar to somebody like Jalen, where he, he's one of their top rushers and he also throws the ball. Is that kind of what you guys are seeing on paper on the film as well? Well, definitely. And, and then they also have two, two running backs that have pretty good stats also. But uh, uh, their quarterback um, is uh, a guy that is, he is a tough hombre. I mean, he runs the ball. He... Uh, throws the ball. He does a lot of things. And even when you listen to them talk about him, uh, you know, they know that he's the key to what, uh, uh, you know, just like Jalen is for us, uh, he, he makes things go. And we have to do a good job of uh, making sure that we can limit uh, the things that he, that he does and has had success with. Now, the other thing, and this is just kind of a random question for me, this will be the third week in a row you guys have played a, a road game. I guess over the course of the time, how do, does that affect your preparation a little bit different over these long stretches as opposed to 
after this, you'll go, we're, we're on the road one week, we're at home one week, we're on the road one week. I'm, I'm guessing it's got to be a little bit of a different approach. And, and for you as a first-year head coach, even maybe a little bit of a, a learning experience. Well, mm -hmm. it is. And, you know, it's something that um, you, uh, it, it, you know, you don't worry about it. You know, we, we've all been in this a long time and we've all done, you know, prepared for a lot of road games. I really like our schedule, the way we do things. We try to do as, as much as we can possibly do here. Uh, like all of our Friday stuff is done before we leave and then we go late and check in and um, and go to bed. And so, um, or we eat first, but, uh, <laughs> but uh, you know, we don't try to take our show on the road as far as preparation is concerned. We try to get everything done here before we leave. And then, uh, which is, it makes it a little tougher when it's a night game. Um, you know, I, I'm, I think there should be an OVC rule that if you have to travel more than two hours, you can't play a night game, but that's just me. Uh, <laughs> I might get in trouble for saying that. I don't know. But um, it, it is. It's tough playing on the road and not seeing your home fans and not doing all that. But uh, uh, it is what it is. And so we prepare and we just go play. And, um, you know, we, we uh, draw closer together on the road because we're all we got. Okay, and like we said, this is the halfway part of the season. So I'm just going to ask you this on one or two players that, that you've kind of seen that have maybe made a, a big jump from where maybe you thought they would be at, at the start of the season. I know I kind of put you on the spot yeah, here, but it's, um, it's kind of halfway through the year. Well, I, I'll be honest with you. I mean, you know, um, I, I watched Adam Drake play a year ago and I watch him play this year and uh, he's a heck of a receiver. Uh, you know, wherever you throw it, he makes the catch. He's tough. He's smart. He runs good. He runs exactly. The, he does exactly what you ask him to do. Uh, he's been just uh, somebody that I, I didn't really know that he would be able to play that well, and he really has in the first uh, half of the season. Um, you know, I think um, uh, you know defensively. Um, you know, some of the uh, the younger uh, DBs. Um, you know, um, an Antoine Johnson who's come on and played corner as a first year guy here was a junior college transfer. Um, you know, uh, you know, I expected a lot out of Kamu and Grizz and, and Robert Haynes, and they've delivered. Uh, they, they've, they're playing well and doing some good things. Uh, you know, Dino and the, and the, and the group up, uh, up front, Laquise. I'll tell you this, Laquise Taylor um, is, I think, a much better player this year than he was last year. Uh, he's lost a lot of weight. He has got his body right, and he uh, is a heck of a football player. He uh, has really done a good job. Uh, it, it's hard because you don't want to, you know, as soon as you mention one, you, yeah. you, you know, you got, you hurt somebody else's yeah. feelings, but, oh, I understand. <laughs> but, I, but, I, you know, uh, when, you know, just thinking about it, I mean, those kind of guys um, are guys that, you know, do st uh, stand out a little bit. And, uh, and I, I've been, uh, you, one thing I will say about this though, the attitude of this football team has not wavered. The attitude of this football team and the leadership of this football team, uh, they have not been, uh, in the boat, out of the boat, all that, you know. Hey, they're, they're uh, committed to winning. They're committed to doing things the right way. And uh, I couldn't be more proud to be the head coach of this football team. I, I look at our record and I'm, you know, I don't like that and all that stuff, but um, I like this football team. All right, Coach. Well, best of luck down there in Cape Girardeau this week. It's a 1 o'clock game, so you still will be able to get home at a reasonable time <laughs> this week. Only about three hours down there to Cape down the way. Easy trip for hopefully a lot of Panther fans that will make it down there. After that, the Panthers will be back home for homecoming against Tennessee State the following week, but we'll talk about that next week. We're going to be right back with this week in EIU athletics, and after that, we're going to have a feature on the four kids from Hawaii who are on this EIU football team. They're going to bring you a little bit of that island culture here to central Illinois, especially with all the rain that we got going on right now. We'll be right back with this week in EIU athletics. Panther fans, here's what's going on in Panther athletics. Panther football dropped an overtime contest at Eastern Kentucky 36-33. EIU is now 1-5 on the season and 1-1 one and one in OVC play. Volleyball finished a four-match homestand at Lance Arena by going 1-1 one one in OVC matches this past weekend. The Panthers lost 3-1 to Murray State and then defeated Austin P 3-2. EIU is now 8-11 overall and 2-4 and in OVC play. Women's soccer picked up a tie and suffered a loss this past weekend on the road in Ohio Valley Conference play. The Panthers tied Tennessee Tech 2-2 in double overtime and then lost at Jacksonville State 3-1. EIU is now 2-11-2 on the season and 1-4-1 in OVC play. 
Men's soccer lost at IUPUI in Summit League 2-1 this past weekend. The Panthers are now 2-7-1 overall and 0-2-1 in Summit League play. On Monday night, EIU had a non-conference match at Bradley. For the result and stats of that match, check out EIUPanthers.com. And women's tennis competed at the SIU Saluki invite. EIU lost the meet 9-8. Now, here's what to watch for this week. On Friday, women's tennis with their final fall meet as they begin a four-day run in Urbana at the ITA Regionals hosted by the University of Illinois. Women's soccer with an OVC match at Lakeside Field against Murray State at 3 p.m. Cross country is in Peoria for the Bradley Classic. Competition begins at 4.25 p.m. with the women's race, which will be followed by the men's race. Swimming gets their season underway in Indianapolis, Indiana. Both men's and women's teams will be competing against Summit League rival IUPUI. The women's team will also have a separate meet against the Butler Bulldogs. And volleyball with OVC matches on the road this weekend. On Friday night, the Panthers will be at UT Martin at 7. On Saturday, women's tennis continues play at Urbana at the ITA Regionals. Men's tennis is in Carbondale for the SIU Saluki invite. Women's rugby hosts Quinnipiac at Lakeside Field at 11 in the morning on Saturday. Panther football is in Cape Girardeau, Missouri for a second straight OVC road game as EIU meets up with SEMO at 1 p.m. You can listen to that game on HitMix 88.9 WEIU, or you can watch it online on the OVC Digital Network. Men's soccer begins a three-game homestand at Lakeside Field as they host Summit League rival Western Illinois at 3 p.m. Volleyball wraps their OVC road matches for the weekend as they are in Cape Girardeau, Missouri to battle the Red Hawks of SEMO at 5 o'clock. On Sunday, women's tennis with day three of play at the ITA Regionals in Urbana. Men's golf is in Clarksville, Tennessee for the first of three days of competition at the Austin P Fall Invite. Women's soccer with another OVC home match at Lakeside Field as they host UT Martin at 1 o'clock. On Monday, women's tennis wraps up play at the ITA Regionals in Urbana. Men's golf with day two of play at the Austin P Fall Invite. And women's golf begins play at the Dayton Fall Invite in Dayton, Ohio. On Tuesday, men's golf wraps up competition at the Austin P Fall Invite. Women's golf with their second day of play at the Dayton Fall Invite. Men's soccer is at Lakeside Field for a non-conference game against the Phoenix of Green Bay at 3 p.m. And next Wednesday, October 22nd, women's golf wraps up competition at the Dayton Fall Invite. Reporting for Panther Sports Talk, I'm Brad Kupiak. Whitlow looks to run to his left side, dodge one man at the 10, cuts back at the 5, and goes over. Touchdown, Eastern Illinois. A lot of time, throws it right flat, hits Duncan at the 5, get the first down, goes for the goal line. Touchdown, Eastern Illinois. Eastern Illinois Panther football is on WEIU. OVC rivals meet as the Panthers of Eastern Illinois welcome the racers of Murray State to O'Brien Field. It's the Panthers and racers Saturday, November 8th at 12 on WEIU, your home for Panther football. Four players. Andrew Kavika Manley, and I'm from uh, Wahiwa, Hawaii. One team. Micah Pono Michaelani Choi from Kalihi, Hawaii. 4,000 miles. Kaelin Kamuela Lonomai Gruje Hill uh, from Makiki, Hawaii. One bond. My name is Louis Calvin Vailopo, and I'm from Waianae, Hawaii. Eastern Illinois football has four players this year hailing from Hawaii, and the adjustment from the Aloha State to the land of Lincoln has been an interesting one, to say the least. It's actually been pretty tough. Um, we had no, none of the right clothes. Uh, me and my fiance and my son, you know, we didn't have any winter jackets, so we had to go, go buy some winter jackets, try to get some boots, you know, to buy a whole bunch of beanies and everything for my son. Um, our moms were trying to buy us stuff. Just we were just way behind when it came to winter. It just kind of shocked us when it started snowing and it was freezing. We were dying out here. Um, I had a hard time at practice just gripping the ball. The, the, this past winter because my hands were frozen. I felt like the ball was frozen, so I just had to adjust to that. Just, my hands were always in the hand warmer, hand warmers, so it was, it, was, it was fun, but it was tough to adjust. Oh my gosh, it was ridiculous. The first time I saw snow, I was like a little kid. I remember, I remember when Lewis came up, Lewis came up on his uh, recruiting visit and started like laying in the snow and was like playing around. It was awesome. It was ridiculous. Like right when I seen the snow, I jumped in the snow. Like, it, was, it was super ridiculous. I loved it. I was, I was actually super excited because, I mean, I've never seen snow before. I never had cold weather or winter, so super excited now, not so excited. It's not as fun <laughs> after you did it for one year. I mean, my freshman year, we played at South Dakota State, and I was like seven degrees or something. I, like, I didn't even want to get off the bus. And then last year, we played in a foot of snow over here, so I don't know. I've, I feel like I've seen it all. Already, I, I, I really hope there's no more surprises for me. And even though they all took different paths to EIU. Coach Dino Babers, he recruited me when I was in high school, when he was at Baylor. Uh, he recruited me pretty hard when he was there. 
I ended up going to New Mexico State, was there for three years. Um, when I put my stuff out that I was going to transfer, he was one of the first ones to contact me. Uh, came up here on a visit, they offered me, and I, that's how I ended up at Eastern Illinois. Coach Dino, when he was at Baylor, saw me at a camp, started recruiting me, and I really liked him. They've all found a sense of camaraderie and a sense of purpose being thousands of miles from home. We all kind of get homesick once in a while, and uh, I mean, you kind of just talk to each other, and we know we always plan what, what flight we're going home on, and kind of try and book the same flight, so it's all, it's all pretty good. Be able to come to practice, uh, we all read stuff in the news, talk about it. Uh, when our high schools play each other back home, we talk about it, laugh about it, brag about it. Um, it's fun to do. Uh, my, my last high school game I ever played in was against uh, Kamu and Pono. So they talk about that because they killed us, so they brag about that. Um, Lewis makes me feel old saying he was in eighth grade watching me play my senior year. <laughs> so it's fun to mess around with. Uh, so. It's good, it's, it does make it a little easier having those guys out here too. They always make me feel like I'm at home. We always, during the summer we make fried rice every Sunday. Every Sunday we make fried rice. And then uh, my sister lives three up, my sister lives three hours up north in Stager, so kind of just helps out a lot. Being from Hawaii, we do use certain words, we use Hawaiian words every now and then. Uh, so talking to them, I'm able to use them. Uh, there's a slang called pigeon, you're able to talk pigeon to them. So, and that actually helps with being homesick. You know, you get to speak your slang to them. Um, saying Hawaiian words every now and then to them and joking around with them using the words in front of other people So it is fun. We do use them and it's a good time He's back being pressured being sacked. Common Bruce Hill's got him at the 32. Just playing football I mean, that's the main reason I'm here. So take advantage. Of it. I love all my teammates It's awesome being here and kind of just being all the boys. So I like that. Yeah, um, I call my mom every day My mom and my parents every day um, Basically, my mom calls me like 10 times a day. It's always checking up on me, seeing how I'm doing, if everything's going all right. It's gotten easier, especially with technology. You know, I'm on Uvu, um, Skype with my family all the time. My sister just had a baby last week, so you know, got to see him in the hospital. Just being able to have webcams and my, my parents being able to see my son. So it's been, it's been easy to adjust because of webcam. But um, I talk to them as much as possible, especially on the weekends, but it's gotten easier. Uh, time has gone by faster and faster, so you just gotta keep doing what you're doing every day, and time will fly by, and you'll you'll be home before you know it. They're gonna hand it to Copperish, heading around the right end, swing to the outside, hemmed in and tackled by Pono Choi. My parents usually come to two games a year. They usually come to family weekend and uh, another, maybe one other one. So they come out kind of a lot. It's good to see them. I mean, when we first got here, it was just me and Pono, so it was, having two more come uh, a year after was kind of just more exciting. One more, ready, go! Ready, good. Definitely, like, uh, whenever I need, like, help, like, if I'm having something to, like, share and cope with, I just go over to Kong Wisdom's house. It's, you know, we just talk it out and stuff. And, like, Andrew, Andrew always, like, Andrew offered me dinner and stuff, so I just go over to his house and just have dinner. And he let me sleep over his house on July 4th when I had nowhere to go. He let me use his truck, and it was pretty cool. Not so much Kong Pono. They were here for a whole year and everything before I got here, but Lewis, I've been able to help him out a little bit, you know, just talking to him about stuff. Uh, just helping him adjust, trying to keep him busy as well. That's what I try to tell the guys as much as I can't stay busy. Because once you get bored, you get homesick. So I just try to stay as busy as much as possible, and that's what I try to help them out with. If they want to come over, they can come over. Uh, my fiance will cook for them and stuff like that. So we try to help out as much as possible. What I love the most about it is being in America. That's what I think. I think being in Charleston, Illinois, they having cornfields around, being able to drive to St. Louis, being able to drive to Indianapolis, St. Louis. You know, it's it's fun being in America. Just uh, the culture shock, people are very nice around here, and that's, that's what I love about it most, being able to get in the car and just drive. Um, like this past Sunday, we went to the Pumpkin Patch in Arthur, Illinois, which was awesome. You know, we've never experienced that, um, seeing the Amish, seeing the horses and the carriages riding around. It's just awesome experiences that I never thought I'd be able to experience. No way. I had no idea. I remember when we actually played South Dakota State, I was telling a bunch of my friends back home, they're like, where is that? Like, I have no idea. Like, so. I mean, I had never in a million years I would have thought that I would have been here, but it was a great blessing. No, I never did, I never did uh, experience or like thought I would be playing here. It was just a God bless uh, opportunity that he just offered me this when I had nothing else to go. So I just took advantage of it and I'm, I'm happy that I'm here. Here's Manley, low snap, he's back to pass. He's gonna throw it into the right corner of the end zone and touchdown, Eastern Illinois. Coming out of high school, I didn't know where I was gonna go, who I was gonna meet, but um, you know, I think God has a plan and all of us being here together is part of his plan and I think it's all going to work out and we're having a great time 
and I'm just glad to be here with those other three guys. Reporting for Panther Sports Talk, I'm Brad Kupiak. Boy Kids Stadium in Richmond, Kentucky for Ohio Valley Conference football tonight. It's the Panthers of Eastern Illinois up against the Eastern Kentucky Colonels. There's the snap. He's back to pass. He's going to be rolling out to his right. Pressure throws over the middle. Intercepted by Wycliffe at the 50-yard line to the 45. And he's brought down at the EKU 40. Take handoff. Jalen on the keeper at the 10. Cuts inside at the 5. He goes over. Touchdown, Eastern Illinois. Second down, eight to go. There's the snap to McLean. Fake handoff. He's back. He's pressured. He's back. Common Bruce Hill's got him at the 32. Empty backfield for Whitlow. Here's the play of the game. Whitlow back to pass. Looking, throwing to the end zone. Touchdown. Adam Drake. Production for Panther Sports Talk is brought to you in part by the following supporters of WEIU.